Ever since Russia renewed its invasion of Ukraine, nuclear weapons have been a primary concern. Every escalation has potentially nuclear implications, and those implications get highlighted by nuclear threats by Russian leadership. But will Russia actually use nukes in Ukraine? First, let's discuss why they would go through Russian nuclear doctrine, and then go through how the war actually confronts that doctrine to make this situation much more dangerous. So why would Russia want to use nukes in Ukraine? The question, at first pass, sounds out outrageous and hard to believe. After all, nuclear weapons were only used at the end of World War II. Since then, there have been no shortage of nuclear threats from parties like North Korea or even Russia. However, those threats remained just threats, and the world, luckily, has not been witness to wartime nuclear weapons use since. That said, there are doctrinal reasons for why Russia would use nukes in Ukraine, and to completely understand those reasons, we need to go backwards in time to the Soviet doctrine on nuclear deterrence and understand how it's evolved to the present day. This tells a fascinating story about a country that has increased its reliance on nuclear weapons to guarantee its survival. In the 60s and 70s, the Soviet Union recognized the power of the nuke. Their power wasn't just in their active use, but in their very possession. He who had the most nukes had the most power. And in the nuclear arms race with the United States, this granted the Soviet Union international prestige. They also guaranteed that the United States would pay the ultimate price if they ever attacked the Soviet Union. Still though, the US never wanted to attack the Soviet Union because the 50s through 70s saw the Soviet Union greatly outmatch the United States in conventional military power in Central Europe. Simply put, the Soviets didn't have to rely on nuclear weapons because their conventional strength was enough to handle the United States. Move forward in time, however, and you begin to see things change drastically. The US does not like to be behind anyone in anything, much less when it comes to conventional military power. As Vietnam drew down, the United United States began to reorganize its military from one fighting in a counterinsurgency war in Vietnam to one prepared to fight a near-peer conflict with Russia. This is similar to the position the US finds itself in today. Throughout the late 70s and 80s, the US invested heavily in both its conventional forces and its nuclear forces. The US's ICBM fleet became much more modernized, capable of surviving a first strike and delivering retaliatory strikes in the Soviet Union. The conventional force would evolve to one that would would annihilate the world's fourth largest army in just a matter of two months in Iraq all the way across the globe from the continental United States. At the same time, the Soviet Union was in decline. Its economy became increasingly isolated from the rest of the world, with costs of goods rising, and more importantly for the Soviet military, the costs of modernization increasing. While the US was advancing, deploying new generations of aircraft, the Soviet Union became more outdated. This trend culminated in 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed, and in its place was the Russian Federation and a series of unhappy and poor neighbors. This is where we would see a dramatic change in Russia's nuclear doctrine. While the Soviet Union had formally and vocally outlawed itself from nuclear first strike, the new Russian Federation repealed this promise. Now, nuclear weapons became the ultimate guarantor of the Russian state, with the new Russian doctrine stating that Russia would use what's called an escalate to de-escalate strategy with nuclear arms. In essence, if Russia found itself in an armed conflict that it was losing, and the very existence of the Russian Federation was at stake, then Russia would be able to use nuclear weapons. Russia would lean heavily on its nuclear forces, especially throughout the 1990s and the 2000s, as their conventional forces were a far cry from the vaunted machine that held Europe's breath through the mid-20th century. Some elements of their doctrine would change in 2014 and again in 2020. Specifically in the 2020 policy paper, Russia would outline their nuclear forces defensive in nature and design for deterrence. However, they would also list later in the paper exact scenarios where they would consider the use of nuclear weapons. In addition to the obvious, such as the launch or detonation of an adversary nuclear weapon on their own territory, they also outlined scenarios where an adversary deploys a similar weapon of mass destruction, targets Russian military civilian installations that degrade Russia's nuclear readiness, or if an adversary uses conventional weapons against Russia while the existence of the Russian state is under threat, and this is a very important point that we need to understand. Since the very beginning of Russia's renewed invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Russia's nuclear rhetoric has increased dramatically. These threats coming from actual authoritative people like the former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev to other prominent figures in the Russian government. What's more concerning is the rhetoric that Putin himself has shared since before the war began. That Ukraine's existence as it is today is a threat to the existence of the Russian Federation. In 
that the invasion of Ukraine is an existential matter to Russia. This sentiment has been echoed by countless Russian propaganda heads, bloggers, and the Russian military. Pair this rhetoric with Ukraine strikes within the Russian Federation, including the Angles Air Base, which is home to some of Russia's nuclear air forces, as well as the recent mutiny of Yevgeny Prigozhin, which Putin was quick to blame on Ukraine, and you have several boxes being checked on Russia's nuclear doctrine that would allow the use of nuclear weapons. Still though, there's one flashpoint in Ukraine that could check yet another box and firmly bring the Ukrainian war into the nuclear realm. In March 2022, as Russia advanced all throughout Ukraine, Russia seized control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, or ZNPP, sitting on the Dnipro River. And ever since then, Russia has been able to use nuclear blackmail on Ukraine to prevent things from spiraling out of control. As Ukraine began to achieve successes in its counteroffensives through 2022 and 23, Russia would continue to use the ZNPP in blackmail. From the withdrawing of nuclear staff from the plant, to using the facility as a base for artillery and other military vehicles, to even the recent claims that Russia has rigged the plant with explosives, Russia has used the plant to keep Ukraine from paying full attention to the actual war and impose potential costs in the future. This would enter a new phase of concern when, on June 9, 2023, the Novokokova Dam was destroyed, draining the Dnipro River Basin of water. Luckily, the ZNPP has its own cooling pond and can draw from another canal if the cooling pond were to lose water. However, this does deny the ZNPP another source of water to cool itself. When you combine the nuclear rhetoric, the belief that the war in Ukraine will impact the existence of the Russian state, and any potential false flags at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, you have a number of boxes checked from Russian nuclear doctrine that could enable the use of nuclear weapons. But even if they could use them, where would they actually use them? Russia would have a number of potential options to use nuclear weapons. They're not all the same, as some are less impactful than others. For instance, Russia could just nuke Ukraine's capital of Kiev. However, this would almost certainly escalate into a nuclear exchange with the United States. We'll talk about why in a moment. As an alternative, they could use smaller tactical nuclear weapons against military targets, such as logistics nodes, command and control nodes, or masses of Ukrainian troops. This is also doctrinally conventional for the Russian military and doesn't technically jump into the nuclear doctrine for the Russian Federation. However, this would also likely force NATO's involvement, which which Russia is eager to avoid. These types of strikes would also have limited military impact, not only given the geographic size of the target compared to the actual size of the blast and the political fallout, but also when considering that conventional weapons can do the same job with no political impact. Russia could also opt to use nuclear weapons in a demonstration in the Black Sea. For instance, Russia could detonate a nuke over Snake Island, a small piece of land that holds some psychological significance to Ukraine. This type of employment would likely be done to force Ukraine to the negotiating table. However, it also may bring costs from NATO as well, and itself isn't guaranteed to bring Ukraine to negotiate. In any case, the fallout of Russia's use of a nuclear weapon would vastly outweigh the benefits. The United States has publicly stated clearly that any use of nuclear weapons by Russia to target Ukrainian cities would mean the end of the Russian Federation, including the deliberate and specific targeting of Vladimir Putin and his leadership. The US and NATO have also been clear that any nuclear use by Russia that leads to radioactive fallout reaching NATO territory would be considered an Article 5 violation, drawing NATO into the war. Russia's nuclear doctrine is designed to preserve the Russian state, not destroy it. Using nuclear weapons in Ukraine would lead to the destruction not only of the Russian military, but of the Russian state. This is the precise opposite of what the intended goal of Russia's nuclear weapons doctrine prescribes. So will Russia use nuclear weapons in Ukraine? I says that that's not likely. And the threats are simply bluster to resonate with the domestic audience, while simultaneously attempting to bring pause to NATO and other supporters of Ukraine. That said, I would hate to be wrong on this, and if I am, then it would truly be a horrible day for humanity. And on that light and cheerful note, leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and it helps out the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a comment about whether you think that Russia will use nukes or not. Until next time.